Hey guys, this is John, and I'm playing Big Phil in the 15-minute pool on ICC. Let's play E4 against Big Phil. Oh, and he's playing my favorite opening against me. But he played knight f6 and not queen takes d5. Okay, so it's not going to be a queen takes d5 Scandinavian. Um, against knight f6, there's a lot of good moves. d4 is good. Knight f3 is good. Um, even moves like bishop e2 are good. Bishop e5 check is a pretty principled way to play. c4 is greedy. Um, I'm just going to play knight f3. I think this is a flexible and good move. Yeah, he plays bishop g4, and let's just continue bishop e2. So if he takes with his queen, I can play d4. And the idea, compared to a normal uh, Scandinavian where black plays queen takes d5 on move 2 and white plays knight c3, compared to that, I haven't committed to knight c3, so I can potentially just play c4 and get my knight in front of the pawn. Um, or my knight behind the pawn, rather. So let's castle first before doing that. I will castle kingside and then just go for c4 at this point. I wonder if he's going to choose something aggressive whereby he plays like queen h5 right now. That would be interesting, albeit probably unsound for him. Sometimes they go queen h5 looking to sacrifice a piece on h3. Plays queen f5 instead. Very likely he's castling long though. I think there's a good chance he's going to play that way. So if knight c3, castle long, probably bishop e3. Yeah, I think that's looking like a plausible way to proceed. Okay, let's do it. I wonder if castles long bishop e3, if he can potentially play bishop c5 to attack d4. And is that something I need to be concerned about? It's kind of crude, but it might work <laughs> for him. It might be effective. I could play queen a4 if I want in this position. I could also do bishop e3 and then queen a4. Let's say I do that way. Let's say bishop e3, uh, bishop c5, queen a4, attacking his bishop. Say he takes um, on d4, maybe with his knight. I take with my knight, he takes with his bishop. And I stand to win a7 at the end of that line. Okay, so let's just do this. There is pressure down the d-file. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and deny that. It's possible I could have delayed c4. But if he wants to take the bull by the horns right now, he has to play bishop c5 to justify his play. I mean, he doesn't have to, but that would be the way to go. He's somewhat mixing two systems. Um, like knight f6 and knight c6 don't fit together that well, in my opinion. Um, usually, if black's going to go for this quick plan of pressure on d4, they, they delay knight f6 in favor of the knight c6 castles, um, those type of moves. So he just settles for bishop d6 instead. Yeah, I mean, the way he's played is pretty logical, even though I think I'm doing pretty well. Um, he might just be trying to play queen h5 and go after the h2 pawn. If I play h3, there's a good chance he's going to sack on h3. And after g takes h3, queen takes h3, I might be hard-pressed to defend this mate threat. So I'm wondering if rook e1 is a decent move here. Um, preparing h3? Or if I should look elsewhere altogether? I could play knight g5, maybe. I'm trying to attack f7. Bishop d6 is an, uh, knight b5 attacking the bishop on d6 is another option. They'll probably stick the bishop into f4, however. I'm thinking I might just play rook e1. Let's do that. So if he goes queen h5, my plan is h3. And then bishop takes h3, g takes h3. Looks risky because I'm opening my king. Queen takes, but then I have this move bishop f1. 
So I'm freeing up the f1 square for my bishop. Also, rook e1 is just useful on many levels. So I haven't started my queenside initiative yet. I'm more interested to see what he's planning to do in the center and on the king side. Because if he does play an aggressive move like queen h5, setting up bishop takes f3, I want to be ready to play h3. Let's just check his stats while we have a moment. So Big Phil, peak rating of 1927. Played over 10,000 15-minute games. That's quite a few games. He does go for queen h5. Okay, so if I play h3, it'll be a moment of truth for him, whether he's willing to sacrifice on h3. Seems to me that he is. So let's run through that again. h3, bishop takes h3, g takes h3. Kind of has to take it with his queen. And then bishop f1, queen g4, bishop g2. I think I can defend. He has two pawns for it, but I'm liking my defensive resources there. So we got to be principled. Stick to our guns. Sometimes after bishop takes h3, you might be able to get away with knight g5, trying to recapture with a piece on h3 because of the discovery. But notice that they would have bishop g4 in reply, saving the piece and also opening up queen h2 again. So I am going to pre-move this. We'll see if he follows through and takes it. This opening can become a little coffee house. I mean, you could imagine if this were a faster time control, that this would be um, pretty dangerous looking and white might not want to allow bishop takes h3 at all, just on principle. But in a longer time control game, we can, we can take the time to refute it or figure out a defense. It, it loses a little bit of its intimidation power, let's say. It's still a, a move we for sure have to calculate, the bishop takes h3 resource. I think he's realizing what I'm planning on doing now. Okay, so he doesn't do it. This seems pretty bad, though, in view of knight e5. Like, if I play knight e5, that's a discovery on his queen. I can take on f7, then? provided he goes to h4, which looks to be the only safe square. That's not good for him. Let's just check. Knight e5, queen h4, knight takes f7. The only remotely dangerous thing I could see him playing there is bishop takes h3 again. Uh, g takes, queen takes. I can always play knight takes d6 if I needed to in that position. So, yeah, I don't believe in his last move. Um, oh, but I'm going to play knight e5, not knight g. I almost played knight g5. You can see my mouse hovering over it. Um, knight g5 would be less accurate in view of queen g6. So knight e5 is what I want to do. Let's play that. And he pretty much has to play queen h4. There's no other safe square for his queen, unless he's going to sacrifice his queen for a piece or something, but that cannot possibly be good. Uh, I'm also noticing that maybe on knight takes f7, let's say knight takes f7, bishop takes h3, I might have bishop g5 as well. Oh, this pawn hangs, though. Uh, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. I see, like, several good options against this, so we'll see what happens. I'm not concerned that much about bishop takes h3. It might even be the case that on bishop takes h3, we could grab one of the rooks, although I probably will not play that. Okay, he's going to allow me to capture on d8. But I also have the bishop g5 move. Let's bear that in mind. So bishop g5, queen takes d4. Knight takes d8. 
Let's say Rook takes d8. We're up in exchange. Mm, I don't know if I feel that I have to give him the, the pawn on d4. I don't feel that's necessary. It does get the queens off. Hmm. Let's just take this. Bishop takes h3. Is that a problem? Hmm. Maybe I should play bishop g5. I'm changing my mind now, but it does clarify. Um, the position a little bit. I don't have to worry about an outright kingside attack anymore. Like I'm looking at knight takes d8, bishop takes h3. It seems kind of crazy, but if g takes, then queen takes. He is threatening h2. I don't have time for bishop f1 anymore. Hmm. It's the type of thing, bishop takes h3, it's still probably unsound in some capacity, but it looks a little scary. Knight takes d8, bishop takes h3. What is he really threatening, though? Not a whole lot. If I just grab on c6, what is he going to do? How is he going to hurt me there? All right, let's take here. And if he takes on h3, I, I think I can get out of this, and I don't see it being a problem. I think he's just going to recapture on d8. He does. Okay, now I was thinking bishop f1 to consolidate. Reinforce the h3 square. Let's do that. So we're up in exchange plus a pawn. We're doing well on material. He's got a lot of active minor pieces, though, so he is most likely going to throw himself at us, and we want to be able to defend. I'm expecting moves like g5. Uh, maybe e5, stuff like that. I can strike back in the center with moves like d5 myself. If g5, maybe queen d2, attacking the g5 pawn, and if g4, I have bishop g5. That looks enticing. I've had some games recently where I've struggled to um, consolidate in the face of, you know, some perceived initiative, consolidate a winning position, that is. Let's do this. So yeah, g4, bishop g5 is good for us. Now if h6, I was thinking of a couple things. F3 or G3. Also, Knight B5 comes into consideration, but Knight B5, he has Bishop B4. Just to be annoying. Place Bishop F4. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm still recovering from this cold. Okay, bishop f4, so if I play g3, what are you going to do? You're going to take my bishop? I guess so. Yeah, I don't know about bishop f4. Seems suspect somehow. I mean, I, don't, I definitely don't think it's in 
If, go, if I go there, he can take on d4, though. I don't think bishop f4 is in the spirit of the position. How about just d5? Is there anything wrong with d5? Nah, let's do that. So if he plays knight e5, I can take on f4, and then his knight will be hanging on e5, is the point. I'm not threatening his knight, mind you. So he takes. Yeah, let's just take back. Knight b4. Okay, so now I notice I can take, if he takes with the pawn, I might have queen d4 forking his knights and also a7. Pretty sure that's strong. G3 also continues to look good here. Hmm. Just thinking about which one I like better. I think I like g3 a bit better for some reason. Yeah, let's do g3. So if he takes on e3 with his bishop, I take with my queen, and I'm attacking his queen, and I'm also attacking a7. It just looks really, really good. pre-move this capture. If he takes on g3, because of the presence of my queen on d2, I can take with my f-pawn, and then queen takes g3 check, queen g2. Should be winning, even though he has knight c2 at the end of that. After we trade queens, it's still winning. White's up material. Up a piece. So I'm anticipating a trade, and then queen h6, probably. And then I have a nice choice of moves. Just queen takes a7, I'm sure, is good. And then if bishop takes h3, I can check and run his king out. Maybe rook e7 is good there too, just to cut his king off. And I threaten queen a8 mate. Tentatively, that looks like the way to go. And what else can he do other than bishop takes e3? Like the sack on g3 is not dangerous, as I just laid out. Um, moving the queen, I can take his bishop. I don't think he'll have sufficient compensation. So... Pretty much only leaves bishop takes e3, and then moving his queen. Yeah, I think that bishop f4 move was suspect. If he had done something like, um, I don't want to skip back too far in the game, but just something like h6 there, guarding g5, then the result of the game is uh, still up in the air. I think white should consolidate and win, but it wouldn't be nearly as easy. He got carried away with bishop f4. So he's thinking a little bit now. Which is good news for us. We can catch up on the clock. And while I have a moment, um, I have to say I really enjoyed the Kaspara versus Short match that was just completed at the St. Louis Chess Club. Um, pretty awesome match. The Chess Legends match, they called it. Kasparov just playing awesome, awesome chess. He takes on G3. Tick back. Um, Check. And I, I agree with what Nigel Short said, that if Kasparov were still playing today, I think he'd be a top 10 player. It's just when you see him in action again, you see like the old Kasparov going. It's just so incredibly impressive. And he had the same mannerisms at the board. He was like shaking his head. He was like grimacing. He was like rocking back and forth in his chair. The energy he puts into his games is just phenomenal. It's really fun to watch.
Check. It's annoying to play such opponents, but it's really fun to watch them play. <laughs> so he trades queens. He's going to play knight c2 after this, but I can just take with my bishop. I don't mind him going knight c2. Um, actually, I have bishop takes g5 against that even. But even if he were able to win back a piece somehow, or like an exchange, I guess not a piece, but an exchange, I would still be doing very well. Even if he wins back a piece, actually, I'm up the exchange. But I think this move should force resignation pretty soon. So we get our bishop out of the attack. We attack his knight on f6. Too many things hanging for him and not enough material. We're just up a full rook at the moment. Yeah, now I think rook f1 is good. I think taking on f6 is good. Probably rook f1 is the cleanest way to do this. So if he takes my rook in the corner, I'll play rook takes f5. Just lining up everything on the f file. He takes a1, so we'll do this as planned. I could take his knight, but his knight is very far away in the corner there. It's kind of like, what's the point? Now I think I'll just Check. trade and play bishop e4. This traps his knight in the corner too. Now his knight can't escape. If I wanted to, I could play... Uh, I could almost walk my king all the way over and take his knight, but I could also play uh, like bishop c1, b3, bishop b2. Go after it that way. Most likely what I'll do though is just bishop h6 and then go win his h-pawn. No, let's just bring our king up. There's many ways to win this now. I don't think it's worth even going taking that knight because the knight is just completely ineffective on that square anyways. So just bring our king up. If king d6, I'll play bishop check on f4. Check. And if he goes to c5, he loses c7. Grab that pawn. Still don't want to get sloppy now, but it's it's such a huge advantage. It practically doesn't make a difference. So he's trying to come to f6. d6 is plenty good. Yeah, I think d6 is sufficient. Attacking his pawn on b7. Also, idea of bishop f5. If knight f6, I can play either bishop takes b7 or bishop f5. Plays b5 instead, so trying to budge my knight. We'll just go here. So now if knight f6, I can play knight e4, or just d7, actually. d7 just wins another piece. He'd have to sacrifice his knight for the d-pawn. King c6, I can take on b5. This king is overloaded. Yeah, knight e4 is good. Knight e4 is actually pretty decisive. Check. Let's do that instead. I don't win a piece right away, but I keep this knight trapped. And also he can't stop d7 now. This king is unable to participate in the defense. I would expect him to resign now. Maybe play one more move and resign. 
Here's I. Okay, so let's have a look at this one. The Scandinavian with knight f6. This is sharper than queen takes d5, so white has to take care. And like I said, there's lots of moves. There's d4, there's knight f3, there's bishop b5 check, trying to disrupt black's development. I think knight f3 is a good choice. It just avoids some of the sharper lines. For instance, d4, bishop g4 is the Portuguese variation. Um, and that can get very sharp if white becomes greedy and tries to hang onto the pawn. In my opinion, you shouldn't really bother trying to hang onto the pawn in the center. Black uh, gets the initiative that they're looking for by playing this opening. There's a crazy line that goes like this, where if white takes Check. on f7, they actually fall under very heavy attack. Don't go into this if you're white, trust me. <laughs> so knight f3, bishop g4, I just played bishop e2, and then he took d4. So like I said, black's kind of mixing systems because... Um, there's an analogous line in the mainline Scandinavian. I'll just show you guys this real quick. If queen takes d5, knight f3, black's supposed best option is to go bishop g4, bishop e2, and then knight c6, and then quickly try to castle queenside. In that case, you leave the knight back on g8 for a while in hopes of pressuring the d4 pawn quick and, and um, efficiently. So drawing an analogy to that line, it seems a little strange to me that black plays knight f6 in conjunction with knight c6. It may not be that bad, but um, it's an aggressive approach. I guess he'd rather have castles queenside in compared to knight f6, and also he might want to have the option of playing e5 in one go rather than have the pawn on e6, I guess is, is another point. Still though, position wasn't super simple to handle. You can see that the engine really likes white. Okay, so on bishop c5, I was thinking queen a4 would be good. But apparently I'm wrong about that. Take, bishop takes, and then just knight takes d4. Okay, and he holds the a7 pawn. Yeah, that's a good point. So what would be better? Queen b3. Ah, okay. So the reason why queen b3 is better is because if he takes like this and then tries to take on d4, the b7 pawn is weak. So, you know, like this, queen takes Check. b7, white's winning. Or if bishop takes d4... Probably bishop takes. He has to stay with his rook. Yeah, knight b5 looks good. And if the rook moves back somewhere, we have Check. tactics like that. Followed by taking here. Or just bishop takes c6. So maybe I would have found that, but um, he did not play bishop c5. He instead played bishop d6. And I went rook e1. So interesting that h3 is possible even here. So if bishop takes h3, aha, uh -huh, knight h4. Yeah, I missed that move. That's a move that you have to consider, but notice that knight h4, his queen has no good squares to stay on the king side. All of these squares are covered by white's minor pieces. It's covered by the pawn. So, and even these squares, he has to run all the way over to a5. And then I can safely take the bishop. Yeah. Okay, if I had seen knight h4, I probably would have played h3 right away. Instead, I played this rookie one move, thinking that bishop f1 would... Uh, allow us to consolidate. But it also gives him a chance to play down the d-file, so he could have done this, and his position is relatively okay. That does make sense. I agree with the engine's evaluation there. Instead, he plays queen h5 with the explicit idea of bishop takes f3 and then crashing through on h2, but I get h3 in. And like I said, if he takes, I could take queen takes and then bishop f1. That's what I had calculated. So Check. queen here and block with the bishop, and I should be able to uh, defend and win. Um, also even here, yeah, there's moves like knight e5. That's a, another good point that the engine makes. So you can move the knight, discover to attack the queen, and only then take the bishop. And if here, g3 is trapping the queen. So you don't even bother taking the bishop in that case. So it looks like queen h5 was the culprit for him. This doesn't lead to a good position. So h3, he went here. c5 is good. I went knight e5 instead. What is it like c5? Is that some improvement? Take knight e5. Maybe it's helpful that the bishop is no longer here. Hmm. Well, at any rate, I played knight e5. It still looks good. Queen h4. Interesting that the engine thinks knight takes c6 is even better than taking on f7. Okay, now it thinks knight takes f7. Yeah, and I took on d8. 
What if he had played bishop takes h3 now? Idea, whoops, idea, take, queen takes, and trying to give mate on h2. Yeah, I think Check. I saw that I could always bail out by taking on d6, and then move like bishop f1, backing their queen off. Okay. Or bishop f3. So he did this. I probably spent a little bit too long here. I spent almost three minutes deciding whether to take his rook or not. Kind of ridiculous, but I was also thinking about this and using this as an excuse to trade queens. But it's a little craven to give back a pawn in order to exchange queens here. I was pretty sure, I was trying to think of like, if I looked at this, this with the engine, would it say bishop g5 or would it say knight takes d8? And I'm pretty sure it would have said knight takes d8. And that turned out to be the case. So what happens if bishop takes h3, just going all out? Could I even take it and survive? No, that's not good. So just something like bishop f3. And even though I've given up my h-pawn, my king can always escape to the center. Yeah, and he's probably just down too much material. Like if he takes my knight now, let's say knight takes d8, then I can take here. And if queen takes, I have this very timely resource, bishop g2, preparing a way for my king to escape. So that's nice. So he took here, I went bishop f1. Yeah, my technique might not have been great. Bishop f3, I guess, is slightly better. Attacking the knight, too. Bishop f1, <laughs> knight g4. I think I saw that knight g4 was possible, because if I take it with the pawn, I get mated on h2. I think I saw that move was possible, but I was just going to ignore it. He might be trying to come into h2, though. Yeah, I don't like bishop f1 now that I look at it. I think bishop f3 would have been better. But bishop f1, he played g5. I went queen d2. Yeah, and now he should just play a move like h6, defending the pawn on g5. Instead, they played bishop f4, and now I get to counterattack in the center. And at all times, they're offering to exchange off the dark square bishop, which is one of their better pieces. So that's the real reason why bishop f4 isn't so good. They need that bishop for attack. They shouldn't be trying to exchange it. Yep, and now bishop g3. I expected something like this, and then backing the queen off. But after queen takes a7, my king is safe. His king is on the run. If bishop takes h3, I think I looked at this move and decided it was decisive, trying to come here. Guess he might be able to hold off for a couple moves, but something like this, threatening queen a8, knight b8, rook takes c7 is going to win. His threats are way too slow on the, on the king side. Doesn't really have any threats at this point. So I think he saw that the writing was on the wall, so he took on g3. Check. But Check. he's running out of ammunition, and the knight c2 move doesn't change anything. And Check. it's just clean up after this. So once again, I recommend uh, knight f3 on move 3 if you're looking for a good weapon against the knight, f the knight f6 Scandinavian. It leads to a position that's totally playable for white and probably good for a small advantage. You're just trying to establish the pawns on d4, c4, and only then bring the knight to c3. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll be back tomorrow with another standard game. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.